Hello, brothers and sisters. This is Lisa, and I'm here to share some devotionals with all of you. The title is Blessed Are the Meek, and this is part one. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Matthew 5, verse 5. Throughout the Beatitudes, there is an advancing line of Christian experience. Those who have felt their need of Christ, those who have mourned because of sin and have sat with Christ in the school of affliction, will learn meekness from the divine teacher. Patience and gentleness under wrong were not characteristics prized by the heathen or by the Jews. The statement made by Moses under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, that he was the meekest man upon the earth, would not have been regarded by the people of his time as a commendation. It would rather have excited pity or contempt. But Jesus places meekness among the first qualifications for his kingdom. In his own life and character, the divine beauty of this precious grace is revealed. Jesus, the brightness of the Father's glory, thought it not a thing to be grasped, to be on an equality of God, but emptied himself, taking the form of a servant. Philippians 2, verses 6 and 7. Through all the lowly experiences of life, he consented to pass, walking among the children of men, not as a king, to demand homage, but as one whose mission it was to serve others, there was in his manner no taint of bigotry, no cold austerity. The world's Redeemer had a greater and than angelic nature, yet united with his divine majesty were meekness and humility that attracted all to himself. And that's the end of part one, and this is part two. Whosoever, therefore, shall break one of these least commandments, and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Matthew 5, verse 19. Jesus emptied himself, and in all that he did, self did not appear. He subordinated all things to the will of his Father. When his mission on earth was about to close, he could say, I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. John 17 verse 4. And he bids us, Learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart. If any man will come after me, let him deny himself. Matthew 11, verse 29, and 16, verse 24. Let self be dethroned and no longer hold the supremacy of the soul. He who beholds Christ in his self-denial, his lowliness of heart, will be constrained to say, as did Daniel when he beheld one like the sons of men, My comeliness was turned in me into corruption. Daniel 10, verse 8. The independence and self-supremacy in which we glory are seen in their true vileness as tokens of servitude to Satan. Human nature is ever struggling for expression, ready for contest. But he who learns of Christ is emptied of self, of pride, of love, of supremacy, and there is silence in the soul. Self is yielded to the disposal of the Holy Spirit. Then we are not anxious to have the highest place. We have no ambition to crowd and elbow ourselves into notice, but we feel that our highest place is at the feet of our Savior. We look to Jesus, waiting for his hand to lead, listening for his voice, to guide. The Apostle Paul had this experience, and he said, I am crucified with Christ. 
Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Galatians 2, verse 20. And that's the end of part two, and now for part three. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee, and give thee peace. Numbers 6, verse 26. When we receive Christ as an abiding, abiding guest in the soul, the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, will keep our hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. The Savior's life on earth, though lived in the midst of conflict, was a life of peace. While angry enemies were constantly pursuing him, he said, He that sent me is with me. The Father hath not left me alone, for I do always those things that please him. John 8, verse 29. No storm of human or satanic wrath could disturb the calm of that perfect communion with God. And he says to us, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you. Take my yoke upon you, and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest. John 14, verse 27. Matthew 11, verse 29. Bear with me the yoke of service for the glory of God and the uplifting of humanity, and you will find the yoke easy and the burden light. It is the love of self that destroys our peace. While self is all alive, we stand ready continually to guard it from mortification and insult. But when we are dead, and our life is hid with Christ in God, we shall not take neglects or slights to heart. We shall be deaf to reproach and blind to scorn and insult. Love suffereth long and is kind. Love envieth not. Love vaunteth not itself, is not puffed up, doth not behave itself unseemly seeketh not its own, is not provoked, taketh not account of evil, rejoiceth not in unrighteousness, but rejoiceth with the truth, beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Love never faileth. 1 Corinthians 13 verses 4 through 8. And that is the end of part 3. And for part 4, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. John 14, verse 27. Happiness drawn from earthly sources is as changeable as varying circumstances can make it. But the peace of Christ is a constant and abiding peace. It does not depend upon any circumstances in life, on the amount of worldly goods or the number of earthly friends. Christ is the fountain of living water, and happiness drawn from him can never fail. The meekness of Christ manifested in the home, will make the inmates happy. It provokes no quarrel, gives back no angry answer, but soothes the irritated temper and diffuses a gentleness that is felt by all within its charmed circle. Wherever cherished, it makes the families of earth a part of the one great family above. Far better would it be for us to suffer under false accusation than to inflict upon ourselves the torture of retaliation upon our enemies? The spirit of hatred and revenge originated with Satan 
and can bring only evil to him who cherishes it. Lowliness of heart, that meekness, which is the fruit of abiding in Christ, is the true secret of blessing. He will beautify the meek with salvation. Psalm 149, verse 4. And that is the end of part 4 and the final one, part 5. But the meek shall inherit the earth and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. Psalms 37, verse 11. The meek shall inherit the earth. It was through the desire for self-exaltation that sin entered into the world, and our first parents lost the dominion over this fair earth, their kingdom. It is through self-abnegation that Christ redeems what was lost, and he says we are to overcome as he did. Revelation 3, verse 21. Through humility and self-surrender, we may become heirs with him when the meek shall inherit the earth. Psalm 37, verse 11. The earth promised to the meek will not be like this, darkened with the shadow of death and the curse. We, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him. Second Peter 3, verse 13, and Revelation 22, verse 3. There is no disappointment, no sorrow, no sin, no one who shall say, I am sick. There are no burial sorry, burial trains, no mourning, no death, no partings, no broken hearts, but Jesus is there, peace is there, there they shall not hunger nor thirst, neither shall the heat nor sun smite them, for he that hath mercy on them shall lead them, even by the springs of water shall he guide them. Isaiah 49, verse 10. And that is the end of the devotionals. I pray you all have a beautiful day in the Lord. God bless each and every one of you. And I will see you either next video or in the air. Bye-bye.